Hi, my name's Alan Smith from bloggersguides.net and this webcast is going to look at orchestration performance in BizTalk Server. It's one of a series of webcasts I'm doing for BizTalk Server 2009, but the techniques I'm using, uh, with the exception of using uh, uh, tracking the orchestrations, could be used in uh, BizTalk 2004 or either of the BizTalk Server 2006 versions. What we're going to be looking at is using parallel action shape to actually call orchestrations in parallel using the atomic scope and uh, reducing persistence in the actual uh, orchestration. It's based on the previous service aggregator orchestration, so if you want to get a view on what's happening in, uh, in the actual design, the first orchestration design, then check out the uh, service aggregator orchestration. So in that orchestration we had a client, we had our service aggregator which I built as an orchestration, and we had our three services, conference service, flight service and hotel service. And the serial Call. I was going through calling the conference service, calling the flight service, and calling the hotel service, and getting the response back to the client. Now that was um, taking a couple of seconds to execute because there's all the latency going through the message box database and calling these services. I'm going to modify the design, so we're calling these in parallel. I've got my client. We will generate an instance of the service aggregator. We'll then send out three messages in a, an atomic transaction to call all three of these services uh, in one go, the conference, the flight, and the hotel service. They will be called in parallel. We'll get our responses back in from these services in a non-deterministic order, so it could be hotel, then conference, then flight, coming back in to the orchestration. But once we've got the response, we're going to be sending out the response back to the client. So what I've done in my project is I've copied the book attendee over to book attendee parallel and renamed uh, the actual file name and also what's important to rename the actual uh, type name here so it doesn't clash with the, uh, the uh, old one. Now if we look at the design of this, if I just zoom out a bit, you can see that we're starting the orchestration, we're going through it and doing this. This is going to be slow for a couple of reasons, you know, we could get, we're getting a lot of persistence points on these, uh, these send shapes. And also, um, if these services are going to have any latency in them, at the moment they, uh, they run fairly quickly, uh, but they could take a, a few seconds to call. I'm going to have to go through all of those uh, uh, whilst I actually call the service. So if each one takes 10 seconds, it's going to take 30 seconds to get from here to here. And I want to try and optimize that design. So what I'm going to do, instead of calling these sequentially, I'm going to call them all in, uh, in parallel. And I'm going to do this uh, just by sort of rearranging the actual uh, shapes here. So first what I'm going to have to do uh, is to actually send all three messages here. So I'm going to move all of the send shapes up here, so it does these three sends uh, sequentially. Now what I can do, uh, because we're sending all the messages sequentially, we won't know when these messages are, are going to uh, come back in again. It could be the flight that comes in and then the hotel and then the conference could come in last. I need to actually uh, receive all the items in parallel, so I'm going to drop in a parallel action shape. And I'm going to add an additional branch to that. And then I'm going to move the receive shapes up into the parallel. So we've got the conference, the flight, and the book hotel. And that should give us uh, a better uh, design if I just uh, zoom out of there a bit. You can see we're making our three sends. And now it would take us about 10 seconds to go from there to there if all of these uh, services were going to take sort of uh, 10 seconds each uh, to execute because we'll be making uh, all the three requests in parallel and then taking in all the three uh, responses uh, in parallel. Now I'm not done with my optimization. Uh, the orchestration uh, will make persistence points after every uh, message that it sends. So if we um, recover the orchestration after some failure, uh, we won't be sending duplicate messages out to these, uh, these web services. And each time the orchestration persists, it's going to save its state in the message box database, which is going to result in a persistence point and result in some degradation of the uh, orchestration. So I'm going to look at uh, how to fix that using uh, transactions. So what I need to do is to place uh, a scope shape on my orchestration. So I'm going to insert shape, uh, take a scope shape, and I'm going to set the transaction type here. And what I want is this to be an atomic transaction. Now it's popping up with an error saying a non-transactional orchestration cannot contain any other transactions. So first of all, before we actually start to use transactions within this uh, main orchestration, I'm going to have to set the orchestration transaction type. And that's down in the properties. Uh, by default, orchestrations are non-transactional. And I'm going to change my orchestration to be a long-running uh, transaction there. And now I should be able to set the transaction type 
here to Atomic and it allows that. So I'll actually uh, rename the actual scope shape to um, Call Services and I can move Book Conference, Book Flight and Book Hotel into that actual uh, shape there. So it will be one atomic transaction. We will send all three of these messages in one transaction with a message box database. So there will be no persistence uh, between here. And the orchestration will perform better, uh, both as an inv individual orchestration. And also when we've got lots of orchestrations running in parallel, there's going to be a lot less, mode, uh, less load on the message box database. So I'm going to build this and I'm going to deploy this. Hopefully we should get a compile first time if I do a rebuild. And the rebuild succeeded. I'm just going to go in here and actually, um, I can't stop my application. What I'll do is just do a, a, a deploy and then actually um, look at look at binding this because I'll have a second uh, orchestration which is running in the actual uh, application there. Okay, so that deployed successfully. Okay, I'm going to have to do a couple of things over here. I'm going to have to restart my BizTalk host instance because I've redeployed the uh, DLL and it's going to have the old DLL in memory and I'm also going to have to restart my I'll refresh my actual uh, view here so I'm going to take on my refresh there and we should see we've got an additional orchestration there which is uh, unbound now I'm going to bind this I've already got the existing ports present here so I'm going to use all the same ports I'm going to use booking in for that one I'm going to use my conference service my flight service and my hotel service respectively for the three service ports and on the confirm out I'm going to use the confirm out file so it's using all the same uh, same infrastructure I'm also going to try and remember to set it to the actual uh, run on the BizTalk server host so that should be uh, fully bound but it's not enlisted it's not actually running so my old uh, orchestration is running this at this book attendee now I'm going to go in here and basically clean out all of the um, messages I was using in stress testing here which was all of these conf messages and I can actually test it. We're actually running with the old orchestration here so when I do a, a copy of this it will take a, a couple of seconds on the first call because it's got to load the orchestration into the DLL but it's run through and it's called all those and we should see the conf booking coming out. Now I'm going to run this orchestration three times and we can go in and query and look at the actual duration out of that orchestration. Yep, that's been done. So I can go in here into my group hub page and I'm going to drop on a new query. Now the tracking uh, hat health activity tracking tool has actually gone from BizTalk Server 2009 and we've got a nice uh, interface here to actually query so I'm going to go for tracked service instances and this is giving me all my pipelines uh, and orchestrations here and it's quite hard to see sort of uh, where all the orchestrations have been running so I'm going to limit the query to where the service class is equal to orchestration run that and you'll notice that you know these sort of calls this was when I was stress testing in the previous webcast they're running up to 30 seconds but my last call I'm on 283, uh, 2283, 2273, 2276 so fairly consistent just over two seconds to actually uh, call that uh, orchestration okay so if I go back to the orchestration section what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, unenlist the regular uh, first attempt and I'm going to enlist the uh, one that is calling in parallel and also start that orchestration. So this one will now be the one that's processing messages and we can go in and send a few messages. Exactly the same procedure now we'll send uh, and we'll be using the new uh, parallel design for calling those services. And I'm going to bring up the service window. Interesting to watch the order in which these are called here. Because you see that they went uh, instantly at all three of those services. It wasn't the first one, then the second one, then the third one. So I'm going to run this again another few times. And you can see from uh, you know the speed that the messages are coming out that we're definitely uh, running it a lot faster here. To confirm this, I'm going to go back into the uh, query window that I just generated here. The tracked service instances, just looking at the orchestrations run this again and uh, we can see that the actual service name here is book attendee parallel for the last four calls 
And if you go over to the duration, you see we're down to 280, 830, and 323 milliseconds. So that's down from about 2.2 seconds to uh, 0 0.28, 0 0.8, and 0 0.32 seconds. So we've got much better performance on that. So I'm also going to run a quick stress test on this with my 128 messages. So I'm going to select all of these, drop them into the uh, docs folder. So it should be going to 268 on each of those services. And I'm going to paste that in now. And you can see that the services here are being called in parallel, unlike in the webcast, if you check that out when they were going in, in sequence. And it should be a lot quicker to actually uh, run through all of these service calls. So that's got all the services called, and uh, we should see the um, 128 uh, messages coming out here into the docs folder. So we've got 129, that's the 128 in the original um, sort of test message that I had uh, floating around in there previously. So another way uh, we can look at the performance, uh, I was talking about the persistence points in the orchestrations. So if I go to the regular orchestration and uh, just zoom out a bit, you can see that we've got all these send shapes I'm going to be persisting here and here and here in my orchestration. In this one, uh, I'm going to be persisting uh, when I send these, calling the services, just after my atomic transaction, so there's going to be fewer persistence points. But I'm actually going to show this uh, by dropping on the performance monitor in the administrative tools and just doing a, a performance chart here. So what I'm going to do is just delete those three that we've got there. I'm going to drop on some performance indicators and I'm going to be going down to the um, the orchestration section. Now this is a bit confusing, you've got all your BizTalk performance counters here for all the messaging, message box, all of the adapters and so on. But you don't see any orchestration performance counters and these are hidden, uh, they're right down at the bottom under the XLang S orchestration section. So now we've got all this stuff like number of orchestrations created which uh, I want to add. I want to have the orchestrations uh, completed, which is that one there. And I also want to know the number of persistence points that I have executed here. And that's that counter there. So if I drop that on and click on close, you can see that we've got uh, sort of 33 persistence points already. Now to reset these counters, what I do is I go into the uh, BizTalk administ administration console and just restart my host instance here. So I'm going to take a restart on that. And by restarting the actual process, we will reset and zero all of those counters. So it can give us a good indication of how many persistence points uh, we've got uh, running there. So going back to Perfmon, uh, we should have reset these. And I'm going to also um, clear the display like that. Now going into the uh, BizTalk Administration Console, I'm going to take my old orchestration first, so let's unenlist the parallel orchestration and we'll start the regular orchestration and uh, I'm going to send in uh, just one message through here. So I'm not, not really too concerned about sending a few to actually uh, average out the performance, just sending one through should actually generate that and we should see the result coming out. And going into uh, the performance we can see that we've got one orchestration created, one orchestration completed, seven persistence points. So there's seven persistence points on the first orchestration here. So what I'm going to do is to run the second orchestration going back to the admin console. I can unenlist my first orchestration and actually start the parallel orchestration. And then just do a quick test on that by copying and sending in the message. And going back to Performance Monitor, you can see that we've got two orchestrations completed, uh, two orchestrations created, two orchestrations completed, and we've got 12 persistence points. So that was four persistence points for the second orchestration and seven persistence points for the first orchestration. So you can see that uh, reducing the number of persistence points and probably what's having the most effect on my uh, orchestration design is making this call in parallel, sending out our three requests and getting in our three responses in parallel which is giving us uh, the, the best performance there. 
Now when I start adding error handling this may not be the best design because if you're going through and booking these items you may want to ensure that you've booked your flight or ensure that you've booked your conference before you even think about booking a flight and booking a hotel and doing some kind of error handling here. So you may actually want to do these uh, in order instead of reducing the performance here. This is a bit dangerous because I'm basically firing out these three messages and if these do start erroring out or returning that the conference is full I will have already booked my flight which in a business scenario could be uh, complicated to go in uh, and cancel. could also be uh, expensive as well. So to summarize this, it's a good use of the parallel action shape uh, to actually wait on these three receives. The receives are basically these blocking actions. So you'd only, you should only really be using parallel action shape if you're working uh, with uh, receives and you're waiting for multiple uh, messages to come back in. So parallel convoys or calling services in parallel, doing parallel approvals within, uh, within a business process is a good use of that. Check out Darren Jefford's book Professional BizTalk Server 2006 or the 2009 version because there's a good description of when and when you should not use parallel action shape in there. The parallel action shape is often misused. I've seen it in a number of projects where they're using it where they shouldn't really be uh, using that shape. The design that I've done, it, it may not be the best option for error handling. I've done it just to reduce the latency of my orchestration. That's the only thing I'm interested in. But in a business scenario, uh, I may want to actually call these services in parallel for you know, making sure that I've got a place in the conference before I actually send the message to uh, book the flight. Reducing persistences, orchestrations do not persist within an atomic scope, so we can use multiple send shapes within an atomic scope to reduce the persistence point in the orchestration. And you can see that change in design took my pers number of persistence points down to uh, from seven persistence points in the old design to four in the uh, new design. Uh, I think the, uh, that most of the uh, improvements in latency I'm getting there uh, is from calling the services in parallel. That is what is giving me uh, the best performance there.